Hey, Chris Lipe here with the only thing that will actually grow your vocal range. Before we get to the only thing that actually works, let's address some of the things that don't work that most people think do work. The first is trying to sing songs that have lots of high notes in them. That does not work. <laughs> because if you don't know how to get there comfortably, and consistently, and mindfully, just trying to hit the notes in the song is just going to leave you feeling depressed, defeated. Oh, let's just sing louder and push or pull our chest voice up. That in and of itself will not grow your range. It will just leave you tense, tired, and eventually hoarse. But as I will show you in a minute, there is a little bit of gold. There's a silver lining to pushing your chest voice to try to hit notes. Here's another thing that won't grow your vocal range. Using proper support. Although, you have to know how to use proper support in order to fully utilize the only thing that will actually grow your range. If you don't understand how to use support, then you won't be able to do anything that I'm talking about in this video. If you need to dial in your support or you're not sure you have it fully dialed in, Click the link below and join my free voice course, and I will help you dial that in. And the last that I'm going to cover of many things that will not help you grow your vocal range in and of themselves is doing scale exercises. Doing scale exercises, no matter how strategically planned, will not help you grow your range for the same reason that singing songs that have notes that are too high for you in them will also not help you grow your range. Because... If you're just going through the exercise because you think the exercise in and of itself will work, you are not addressing the root cause of why you can't grow your vocal range in the first place. Okay, so what is it? We have to nurture and grow, develop our head voice. Oh, no, 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 no. I'm not talking about hitting those kind of notes. I want to hit powerful mixed voice chest voice amazing high notes yes it starts by developing your head voice i don't want to sing like that i want to keep listening but if you spend a lot more time talking in your head voice and using really range filled dynamic phrasing even as you're in regular conversation initially when you start doing this you're going to feel like you're being very weird, and, and you, might, you might very well be being very weird. But as you get in more of a habit, you'll find that the range-filled dynamic speaking can actually be a natural form of self-expression that becomes more a part of your speaking voice. As your head voice becomes more a part of your normal speaking voice, I'm exaggerating quite a bit here, but as it becomes that, you are less afraid to embrace it when you're singing and not merely accidentally crack into it because you lack the ability to hit the note the way you want to, which is, in your perception, chest voice. So, start by nurturing your head voice on a speech level. Exaggerate your speech. Get into your head voice. Now, what if you can't find your head voice? Ah! Remember one of the things that didn't work, just pushing your head voice higher and higher? That doesn't work in and of itself, but it does help you find your head voice. If you are trying to push up in your chest voice, and you start to feel your voice crack or break, or if you just start sighing from high to low, sigh from high to low, there's my head voice. Yeah. Or, uh, 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 <laughs> that, that sort of breaky, volatile sound is your head voice. If you haven't developed it or gotten comfortable with the muscle memory to normally live up there in head voice all the time with good closure like this, then it's gonna, it may very well feel airy and awkward. 
that doesn't mean that you suck or won't ever be able to use your head voice for anything real. It just means you haven't nurtured it. You haven't developed the muscle memory. You haven't lived with it in enough different scenarios to be comfortable with it. After you've spent time with your speech and getting more and more into head voice as part of your routine as you're speaking, start to, and this is going to point back to another one of the things that doesn't work in and of itself, Start to sing songs that are out of your range, that have lots of high notes, but that you intentionally use your head voice for. Oh, that's going to sound terrible. It's not going to sound like the uh, the original artist because they're nailing those in their chest voice, or at least so I think. Exactly the point. Throw out entirely how that artist does things and just worry about carrying the melody and be unapologetically head voice. As you're doing this, think about how you can feel out and dance with and nurture and grow the sensations you feel while you're using your head voice. Don't worry about making it sound better. Just think about how you can make things feel good while you're using your head voice, while you're singing this song or songs that are would normally be out of your range because you're trying to nail everything in chest voice. As you make a habit of doing these two things, growing the comfortability factor with your head voice and normal speech, and singing songs that would ordinarily be too high for you that you're going to just sing in head voice, Uh, and carry those melodies and get really comfortable without judging how you don't sound like the other artist. As you do these things, start listening to music and the vocalists you love and new vocalists differently. See if you can, as you're going through these own experiences of, of developing your head voice, pinpoint times when these other singers are using their head voice. Listen for it specifically. The more you nurture your head voice, the more comfortable you get with it, the easier it's going to be through the ways that I'm demonstrating practicing here, the easier it's going to be for you to discover your practical, usable, good sounding, powerful, mixed voice. When you listen to Vessel in the summoning, one of your first thoughts, certainly mine was, wow, this guy's got an incredible range. When you really dig into all the different ways he's changing resonances and and using his voice. You realize that he's using a lot of head voice, but then you start to realize that he's not using as much head voice as you initially thought he was, that he's going in and out of head and mix and chest. As I started practicing this song and started learning how it would work in my own voice, I noticed the same thing happening. When I approached all the notes that seemed high to me in my head voice and then started to think down on those notes, started to, oh, I'm going to go up there and I'm going to hit the note in head voice and then I'm going to just see what happens and see how it connects freely and comfortably, because I have spent time nurturing my head voice in all different parts of the way my voice feels and in different parts of my range, things started falling into place in terms of mixing. I'm not saying this is an instant thing. I'm saying this is a process that we have to open ourselves up to by using our head voice. Okay. Raise me You heard it. I exaggerated that flip, right? I wasn't going to try to reach for that note. Neither does Vessel. That's why it's such a cool, inspirational thing. Raise me up again. No. Just freely abandon into the head voice. Even let your voice crack. Raise me up. Experiment with the sensation. Make sure it's comfortable and floaty. Raise me up. Lean into your chest voice, then lean into your head voice, and then let your voice go down. Raise me up again. Notice what I did there? I went down and I hit again, head voice, again. And then I thought, huh, that's a lower head voice note. 
is it comfortable to hit a head voice note and a chest voice, the same note in head and chest? Why, yes, it is. Maybe it's not for you, so phrase it differently. The key here is abandon and experiment. Okay, M- listening on. Chest. Ah, so take me, chest, take me. Very high. There is no way I'm going to hit that note if I'm trying to reach for it. I have to float to it. With the experience and the knowledge I have of playing with my head voice in a thin, small way. My voice is small up there. I'm playing with this very small, very small sound in a, in a speech engagement. And then when I think, oh, I'm, I'm going to try to hit this really high pitch, I'm going to hit it small first. Take me. And then I'm going to grow it. I've already hit the note. I've already done what I want to do. I've already hit the note. Never mind that it's not really powerful. It doesn't matter. Vessels isn't powerful either. It doesn't, it doesn't matter. Pass the... Now, what you heard me do here... Pass the edge! What am I doing? Is that mix? Is that chest? Is that head? It's a mixed voice, and it came about by... Being in the posture of small, free, comfortable, and high, and then, because this melody is so awesome for it, going down to an area, which is not quite as high, that allowed me to feel out a transitionary area in my voice. Now, this takes a while to feel out these transitionary areas. You have to, that's why I recommend it starting to just be really range filled in your speaking so that you can figure these things out. But if I start heavy, when I'm trying to go high, I'm not going to hit those notes. If I if I start high, like this line is suggesting, and thin and small, and then as I'm going down, beef it up, I start to discover a cool mixed resonance. Now right there, other side! Right there, I did sort of push up in chest voice. But I am thinking about my head voice there. I'm not going, see the other side. No, I'm thinking about the same idea that I just used, that as I go high, I go lighter. And if I abandon in my head voice, fine. That sort of mindset of it's okay to go high, light, and in head voice, whatever the results, allows me to be thinner even as I approach, and easier and with less tension, even as I approach higher notes in my chest voice. Now, listen here. Did you hear the end of that note? That was such a hard right? Is that a head voice note? Uh, there's some there's some mixing that I've started to develop, but it absolutely started with me going, okay, we're going to go play in head voiceville. As I've learned to use my support strategically and inject the feeling of compression into my head voice wherever I'm using my head voice in, in whatever part of my range... As I've experimented with that, and I can help you with that in my free course, I have learned to use compressed head voice as a way to get mixed voice. Now, listen to the end of that again. There's actually grit on that really high note. I went from using head voice, a pure head voice, to a gritty mixed voice, all the way up there on that very high note. The lines are blurred as you ascend and fall off the note. As you move your resonance around and playfully experiment with the way the note feels, you start to stumble on all sorts of ways that your head voice 
engages the rest of your voice.